From pages hand-painted to a figure hand-crafted, here's your look at the 3-0 Zhao Dao Song of Sylvan. This is the Crow Teeth 1-6 scale collectible figure. The 1-6 scale Crow Teeth collectible figure depicts the beautifully illustrated character as presented in a series of paintings of Zhao Dao's Song of Sylvan art book. Crow Teeth stands approximately 11.5 inches tall, has over 18 points of articulation, and includes a tailored fabric clothing, multiple interchangeable hands, a short sword, a lantern with light-up feature, and three animal companions, two crows each with different design, and a frog. Not quite the figure we normally look at on this channel. Crow Teeth is definitely a very unique design, of course, pulled from the pages of Zhao Dao's illustrations. While we take the measurements to the very top of Crow Teeth, I'd like to send a big thank you to the folks over at 3-0 who are nice enough to send this sample my way. If you guys are in the market of picking up Crow Teeth for yourself, you should be able to now find it through various online websites. According to my trusty tape measure, you're looking at the figure of crow teeth standing 11.6 inches in height. Quickly switching that to centimeters, you're looking at the figure standing 29.4, almost 29 and a half centimeters tall. The figure comes with some pretty interesting looking accessories. I wanted to start the review with this one here first. This is the paper lantern that comes included with the figure that you can see has been laced around what looks to be a bamboo rod or bamboo stick. Uh, it has been attached only by a very thin burgundy thread, something that I am a little bit worrisome about of displaying the figure long term with it. As the paper lantern itself isn't made of paper, a little bit more heavier actually. Now there is a battery compartment inside the top section here that does have a switch. When you do press it, it does illuminate and it lights up and pulsates like a, an actual traditional flame would work inside of a lantern. I mean, it's a nice looking effect. The thing about it though is uh, the batteries aren't included, so you need to pick up some AG3 batteries. You actually need two of them. And then it involves you very carefully taking the top part off and then putting the batteries in and then popping it back down. Um, the thing about it, though, is it, it, it's very difficult. At times, when I have put it back in, what I thought was successful, the light actually didn't light up. I had to take the top part off again, and uh, then I had to just kind of feed and adjust those batteries, making sure they were completely lined up with one another for that light-up option to work. Sometimes, like I said, the lantern works. Sometimes it doesn't. But, I mean, when it does, though, it's a pretty impressive-looking lantern to have on display. Again, the only concern I have, if I'm holding it the same way that the figure would be holding it in its hand, there's a lot of there's a lot of weight actually on this that may not look like it's heavy, but when you factor in the fact that it's sitting on a plastic, sculpted looking bamboo rod like this, I mean, I worry again like this being so heavy, not only is it causing stress to this, but it may also be causing stress to the strand of fabric that's attaching the lantern to the top of the bamboo. I mean, it looks good. It functions for the most part successfully. But again, I just don't know long term how resilient that fabric is going to be. I certainly don't want that wearing down to the point that it breaks and this lantern falls completely off. The next accessory we'll have a look at is the Tanto or Japanese dagger that comes included with the figure. It has that same material that we saw with the lantern coming out from the bottom of the hilt. It's been painted nicely and not going immediately the route of silver, which seems to be a quick jump to what you would paint the broad sword at. But instead, actually, it's got a slight discoloration to it. Like it looks like it has some age to it, which I really do think is nice. Um, it is a broad blade sword, so it's a little bit thicker than maybe a, a thinner katana blade. And it does have some nice detailing done to the actual hilt, where you can see some exquisite gold has been added to it. You can either display it in Crow Teeth's hand, or you can also go about this route as well. If you look at the sashed belt, hidden inside and tucked inside of there is the sheath. Now you can go ahead and take that sword 
and slide it into the supplied sheath. Again, if you want to keep it out of the way, and if, say, if you want to display crow teeth with another accessory, it's a nice little place to conveniently place the sword. While we stick with his weapons, we'll also certainly have a look at the very long spear that comes included with the figure. If I put it right next to it, it's actually even taller than the figure when you factor in the length of the head of the spear, or the point. Something that's interesting about it, though, is normally when you think spears, obviously you know what the head of a spear looks like. This is a very distinct design. And equally so, not only is it a distinct look, but it's also been painted with like a slight brushing of rust also to the end of it. It just adds a little bit of age to it. A nice wood grain done to the full length handle. It looks like it probably would have been crafted from, say, wood, whereas the paper lantern would have been used looking like it probably was a bamboo material used for it. It does fit into his hand. I mean, you can just, it does have one of the accessories also would be the hands and one of the hands is perfectly for perfect for gripping and holding the accessories, as you can see right here. There's a couple of different hands that you can use. Um, there are basically relaxed hands, there are fist hands, and then there are gripping hands for, again, either holding the lantern, for holding the Tonto sword, or for also holding the spear, which certainly of the three is the longest of the accessories. The next thing we'll have a look at is rather ornate looking necklaces that can go around the neck of crow teeth. We'll start with this one here first. This looks either to be like fangs, claws, or perhaps even sharpened teeth. There are five laced with a white threading that's fed through each of the individual crafted eyelets. Uh, as you can see, it starts smaller on the sides, works to a larger medium size on the either side, and the larger one in the middle here and it's one of four different necklaces that comes included with the figure. The next one is slightly smaller than the one that we had a look at before. It looks like it's made up of little ringlets of bone that have been very carefully fed along this line of white threading. I do want to stress though that these aren't elasticized. In other words, you don't want to be pulling and stretching this anyway because that would definitely damage these necklaces. Instead, when you are prepared to put this on the neck of crow teeth, you're wanting take the head off first, very carefully feed this over top of the neck, and then put the head back in its place. This one again is slightly smaller, kind of has like an ivory coloring to it. It definitely looks like it's been crafted, made use of with smaller pieces of bone. By far though, the smallest of all the necklaces happens to be this one right here, which bears a little bit of a resemblance to a crescent moon. Again, likelihood it was probably crafted from maybe a bone of some sort. It's got some interesting little details to it, but it has little to no give. Don't try to pry this open. Again, when it comes time to putting this on the neck, again, you're just going to want to take the head sculpt completely off and fit this on. When it comes to displaying the figure, this ends up being the last of the necklaces that I put on because, again, it's the smallest. And I'm sure you were probably thinking I was going to go even smaller still, but instead, actually, we're going to the largest of the necklaces for crow teeth. It's this really interesting and more colorful one than the last. This one has all these little tiny beads fed through the same, again, coloring of that burgundy red that really is going to make a lot of appearances when we look at the figure itself. I really am quite impressed with the level of paint and detail that 3-0 put into this piece, especially when you look at this head sculpt there. It's very different. It's not, of course, something that you would expect to see on many six scale figures. And that's maybe one of the charm and the appealing things about crow teeth is not only the accessories are rather interesting, but the figure itself is very much a far reach stretch to maybe some of the stuff we normally look at here on this channel. The last of the accessories we'll look at, though, is the animal companions that join along Crow Teeth on his journey. This one is a frog, and before you think that perhaps the frog looks a little cartoony, keeping in mind, again, this is based on artists' illustrations, storybooks, if you will, that, again, like things like the frog, aren't going to have the most rooted in reality. This one has a nice gloss coat to it, and you can see there's some nice pattern work that they've done to the top of the frog. If we flip it upside down, a very hefty looking frog. This one does have very large cartoon style eyes. That would be a common trend when we have a look at the other companions as well. Crow Teeth also gets two crows of different sizes, different colors, and different sculpts. This one is slightly looking off to the side. It does have kind of a little bit of a gap 
that you could put on Crow Teeth's arm. This one, however, is this one kind of is interesting because not only is it slightly smaller, it still gets treated to that gloss coat of semi-gloss covering over top of the details done to the paintwork, but also this one happens to be a magnet as well, whereas all the other ones really involve you finding a necessary place, a place where you can put this on crow teeth. This one actually, if you take the figure, just lift it up here for a second, this one actually attaches via magnets. And for the most part, it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, I wouldn't be tipping this head upside down to show you, but it does have a magnet attaching to it, which is clever the way that they've done that. I don't know why necessarily they didn't do it with the other animal companions, but again, based on the designing of the sculpt and based on the fact that this little critter sits on top of Crow Teeth's head, would have been likely the reasoning why they went magnets for this particular critter. For the figure itself, I just decided it would be fun to keep the crow in his place. He seems, after all, happy where he is. And because he is also magnetized, I don't feel as much worried that it's going to fall off and land somewhere. But we'll keep it there for the time being, and hopefully I don't regret that decision later on. We'll have a close-up look at the face sculpt, which definitely does break the mold of some of the stuff we normally see on this channel. Normally, when it comes to six-scale figures, I'm usually looking at television-based characters or movie-themed characters. This one is slightly different because it's pulled from an art book, specifically Song of Sylvan from Zhao Dao. Now, the artwork, if you're familiar with it, has a very unique design to it. And I feel for looking at the source material, 3-0 did a pretty good job of recreating that as a six-scale figure. He's got some real intricacies to this that I'm really looking forward to showcasing to you guys. I guess first and foremost, while we are certainly still sticking with the head sculpt, the head sculpt is pretty somber in the way of the expression at least. There's not much in the way of expression. In fact, actually, there's more concern, I feel, on the head sculpt than something of joy or something of contentment. The, the eyes seem like they're slightly sadder in design. And while you wouldn't be necessarily finding realism in the sculpting of this particular head sculpt, it's an interesting, again, different style of figure than some of the stuff I normally would look at on this channel. The complexion is really quite pale with only few little bit of uh, instances where you got a little bit of like a blush settling on the cheeks. Other than that, like I said, the skin is pretty pale in comparison to maybe some of the stuff that we've looked at before. Very large eyebrows, very sad looking again face. And uh, if you look at the eyes, I mean, they're almost very similar to cat eyes, very thin slits for pupils and very little reflection actually bouncing off of those eyeballs at all. Intricately detailed certainly would be a best way to describe this figure. I'll probably be using that term quite a bit as we look at all the details on this particular piece. But continuing the trend of looking at the forehead here, you have this bandana that wraps across the top with that very familiar wine red color. On either side of the head sculpt is a very intricate, detailed cat. It looks like it was carved, perhaps, from wood or stone. That's on both sides, actually, so you want to be very, very careful that with the small nature and the pointed nature of these ears, you want to be careful that you don't clip these and pop them off or break them, potentially. And it seems like there's a ram right in the middle there. Very, again, small in nature. Very, very intricately detailed. Uh, crow teeth also has what I'm guessing to be crow skulls attached to the lobes on either side. These are attached by little metal ringlets, as you can see, that have actually been fed through real holes, as opposed to simply just gluing them in place. If we spin the head around very carefully again, because I certainly don't want to drop his little crow companion, what you are treated to is very long hair coming out from the ponytail. It's close enough as well, actually, that if you look at the sculpting of the plastic on the back of Crow Teeth, and then you see now where they've introduced a new medium, the fact that they've got it banded right here is the best way to conceal the fact that the medium does change. So instead, you've got plastic here, you've got the little band, and then from there, you've got real hair. The hair is actually quite smooth to the touch and has a lot of additional colors to it as opposed to simply just being brown or black. It looks like there's little strands of silver, perhaps blonde in there. Again, it's really some of the softest hair I've seen on six scale figures. It's been handled really well by 3-0. For the figure's attire, Crow Teeth is wearing a two-piece suit consisting of an outer kimono robe done in black and an interior robe done in, again, that continuation of the red. 
it's of two different materials. This one feels a little bit softer to the touch. Well, this one feels more like something similar to like a fleece. It's got some very ornate, there I go again using that term, with some pattern work of flowers done on the cuffs of the sleeves. As we move a little bit further down, we're treated to some frogs. Several frogs actually making their way across the bottom of the kimono robe. And this is a really interesting touch as well. I don't know if this would actually be depicted as real fur, where they would have pulled the hide off the animal, but it looks like it's almost like a bear or cat. You can see there's some teeth, the nostrils, the nose, and then of course the eyes up the top. This is used, this has been produced using like a faux fur material. It's really interesting the way that they've got that slightly off to the side of the figure. And it certainly does draw your attention. It certainly draws my attention when I see it. It's the first thing I spotted when I put down this figure for the first time. Just before we have a look at the figure's articulation, I wanted to show you guys also how to take the head sculpt off to attach the necklaces that we had a look at before. When you are taking off the head sculpt, you want to be careful of the sides here. These are things, of course, that could most definitely break. So instead of actually grabbing it from the side, I find if you just kind of take the head sculpt here and wiggle it from the top, you can quite easily pull it off with no damage whatsoever to all those sculpts on either side of the headband. Then from there, of course, now you've got a decapitated head sculpt. So let's do something with that. We're going to go ahead and take the necklaces. We're going to feed those over top of, there we go, just like that. I like to put on that one first, being that it's the longest, then I'll feed this one on top of that. Just like that, make sure it drapes over top. Then take, for me at least, I go this route, I add the one of the smaller variety that looks like it's made of the ringlets of bone. And last but certainly not least, because again, this has no give to it, I'd like to put this one on last. And you can see how they've sort of stacked on top of one another. Then again, when you are putting this back in place, be careful. You want to also make sure that this lace up, this front section of his headband, is in front of it because you certainly don't want to get that tucked underneath. It's happened to me a couple of times already where it tucks inside the recessed cavity of the head. You want to just make sure that you bring that out first before you put the head back in its place. That being said, now let's finally have a look at the articulation on crow teeth. The head does move up and down and you can rotate it left and right. Um, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, but I'll tell you anyways. You want to be careful of the earrings that they don't get caught against the necklaces when you are turning it back and forth. They are high enough that it doesn't happen too often, but sometimes, just sometimes, if it catches across right there, for example, the necklace, if you twist it quickly, you don't want the risk of that popping out. Certainly, you don't want to cause damage that way. The upper torso does have a crunch to it. Despite all the layers of fabric over top of the body, you can quite easily move the torso back and forth, and you can move it up and down. There's also a bit of a rock ankle, a rock torso pivot, I should say. They can move back and forth on the figure as well. The arms actually aren't so much the issue at all when it comes to rotating them out. I would have thought perhaps with all the additional fabric that they have for the robe that it would have restricted what movement you could actually pull off for this figure. And quite the contrary, it actually moves quite easily. Back and forth, you can move the arms out this way. Swivel at the bicep, it seems like a single hinge on the elbow. And then you can rotate the hands all the way around, whatever hands of course you decide to display on this particular figure. One little disappointment about this particular figure that I have is while the legs, I don't have so much the issue, I can move those out, I can split them out quite generously actually, and I can move them forward, I can move them back. Uh, Crow Teeth also has a swivel on the top cut of the thigh. No, no, that's not the disappointing part. But I do find the, the knees, the knees are very loose on this figure. I haven't had so much the issue of standing it, but putting him in any bit of a dynamic pose, unless I make use of a stand, which so happens not to have been included with this figure, I wouldn't want to put them in dynamic poses for the risk that, again, I feel like I feel like the knees just aren't strong enough. I might have to see if, if I can actually go in there and see if I can tighten up the joints a bit. We'll get a close-up look at his feet as well, which, being the nature of the way that they're curved as well, they're not completely flat feet. Because of that, you're also adding a little bit of the worry of having the figure standing upright. Again, it may not be everybody's figure, but I certainly did notice that on my particular figure, the figure's knees, like I said, are very, very loose. Um, again, if, I feel if you aren't displaying the figure in any crazy poses, um, if you're having it just straight museum pose, then the figure, let me just go ahead and get it standing here, stands, it seems, perfectly fine. 
if you do want to put it in, in a more dynamic pose, then I would definitely recommend, uh, stress the idea of displaying him with a display stand. Just again, because you don't want the figure to topple over. If you pick it, pick up this figure for yourself, you may not even have any issues with the knees at all. But I did notice it was a problem that was plaguing this figure that I have. Zadao's crow teeth from 3-0, I'm sure likely would have been considered a figure you never would have expected to see here on this channel. I have reviewed 3-0 pieces in the past, but generally those fall within the terrain of, say, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, or Breaking Bad. This is definitely outside my wheelhouse. So when the opportunity arose to be able to showcase the crow teeth figure, I jumped at the chance because it gave me the opportunity to think outside the box of what I normally would be thinking of as collectibles. And also through this has given me the opportunity to be experiencing something that I would have not even known existed, Zadao's Song of Sylvan. Uh, truthfully, it's not a style I would have been familiar with in the past anyways. I'm sort of rooted in comic book illustrations. So again, through looking at a figure like this, it gave me the opportunity to be able to see something that I would have not seen before. And that's the enjoyment that comes in reviewing. Every once in a while, you'll be treated to something different than what you normally would be looking at. And through that, it's given me the opportunity to showcase to you guys some of the incredible products that 3-0 are producing. Not all of them are based around television or movie characters. Every once in a while, they'll produce something very much outside the box. And Zadao's Song of Sylvan Crow Teeth may very well be that. A very detailed figure, not rooted in reality, but certainly it has a very comic anime style design to it, pale in, per, in complexion, and coming included with very comic-y looking cartoon companions is again very much different than some of the stuff I normally look at on this channel, but really liking the design of this character overall. Very intricately detailed as we covered over in this review. The accessories that come included with the character are actually different as well. The lantern is an interesting touch. Though, I, again, I worry about displaying the figure with that just because of the threading that we talked about before. Uh, likelihood, when it comes to displaying crow teeth here, I'm probably going to be displaying it exactly like I've got here in Final Looks. I may, though, incorporate a display stand, which sadly wasn't included with the figure, just because of the one that I have here does have slightly weak knees. May not be everybody's figure, but I do feel, of course, compelled to point out things like that. That this particular crow teeth, this one here, unfortunately has slightly loose knees. So when it comes to displaying it, for the risk of breaking anything done so well on this particular piece, I'm most likely going to be displaying it with a display stand. What did you guys think of this figure, the crow teeth from the folks over at 3-0? Very different, again, from some of the stuff that we normally look at on this channel. Again, and that's sort of the fun appeal with that. Did you manage to pick up this figure for yourself? Or based on this review and this review alone, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of it. Also, if you guys would like to go back and have a look at some of my other reviews for 3-0, there is a playlist just for that. I'd like to send out a big thank you also to the folks over at 3-0 who are nice enough to send crow teeth my way. If you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and stay tuned because we're going to be having a whole look at different other different 3-0 six scale figures in some upcoming reviews. So stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.